well here we are again, Grandma Roseanne, Grandma Roseanne's kitchen, and we are going to make cabbage rolls today. Cabbage rolls are wonderful, and I think they're a very, very, very old recipe. I know my mom made it, I know her mom made it, and now I'm making it, and I absolutely love them. There's a lot of different ways to do them. You can do them in the oven. You can do them in the Instant Pot, of which, if you've watched my videos, you will know I'm really not a fan of it. But if you are, you go for the Instant Pot. I really like the slow cooker for these. I think they get a much more tender meat. It's more savory, and I think that the entire um, essence of the sauce goes through that cabbage when you give it enough time to do. So that's what I'm going to use. But again, like I said, you can do the oven or the Instant Pot, whatever makes you happy. We always start out with a head of cabbage. Now, you want to get as large a cabbage head as you want. It's really not going to matter, depending on how many rolls you're going to make. Well, it's cameraman and I, and I want to freeze a few, so I'm going to use a rather small head here. Many times you will see that you can cut the core off, pull the leaves off, and individually um, boil them. If you do that, what you need to do is you need to cut this stem. I don't really like doing that. I like doing the whole leaf and then dealing with this fibrous part later. So what I do is I just pop the whole thing carefully into some boiling water. No salt in there, just boiling water. And I just let it just simmer for a few minutes. I mean like one or two. Because you're going to see how easy it is then to take a leaf and pull it off. So easy. You see that? You go back in and you get your next leaf. By that time, the following leaf is finished. So I have as many as I need right here. This is all that I'm going to use. Now, you can continue to cook the cabbage if you want to, um, but I want you to just see how easy it is to just peel that off when you're ready. I just don't need any more than what I have right here on the plate. So this is all I'm going to use. The rest of it I'm going to take out and then I'm probably going to chop it up and make a cabbage casserole with it or something else because I absolutely love cabbage. And I will tell you, it's a very, very nutritious vegetable. Don't be afraid of it. Just don't be afraid of it. So now that I have these done, now we're going to go to the next step of doing the sauce. Now this is a, a very simple sauce, but it's a very flavorful sauce. I'm going to start out with tomato sauce. Ha, huh, no label. I bought the, the tomato sauce from Costco and I opened it up and the first two cans didn't have a label on them. When do you ever see that? There's like, I don't know, 16 cans, but the first two didn't have a label. So being adventurous, I opened it up and yes, it is tomato sauce. <laughs> so that's going to go in. And then we want one tablespoon of brown sugar. That little bit of sweetness is good in there. We also want two tablespoons of ketchup. We want one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Is that the hardest name in the world, Worcestershire sauce? Mm -hmm. Whoever did that? Whoever did it was very successful because it's been around, I think, since 1820 or something. Well, not quite, but almost. I know you'll hold me accountable to that date, so I'm not. Now then, you're going to want a little bit of, um, a little bit of citrus in there. My lemons are not ready yet. I typically would use about a half a teaspoon of lemon juice, but my limes are really good. So I'm using some lime. And all it is is about a half a teaspoon of lime. There. Now we mix this up. And we're gonna set it aside. 
We will come back and grab it in a minute. Before I set this aside, because I forgot I wanted to do this part, um, there's a lot of tomato sauce left in this can and we're going to want to have more liquid in here. So all I did is I got the can about half full of water and I'm going to add that to the sauce. It's amazing how much sauce gets left in these cans and there's really no reason at all to throw it away. There. Now we can set it aside. All right, now that our sauce is complete and it's just ready, waiting and ready for us, we're going to start with the filling. I have got one and a half pounds of ground beef in here. Now you can mix this up if you'd like. You can put a pound of ground beef, a half a pound of sausage, you can do 50-50, you can use veal, you can use whatever you want. We really like it with just the ground beef, so I'm using just plain ground beef. Then we want one teaspoon of salt. a half a teaspoon of pepper, one cup of diced onion, one teaspoon of onion powder, <laughs> the teaspoon is stuck to the tablespoon. I guess they're buddies. Okay, one teaspoon. One teaspoon of garlic powder. One teaspoon of garlic minced. want one egg. Now what you're going to use is the best tool you have. Yes. And we're going to mix this all up beautifully, just like this. You want it well incorporated. You want all the onions and the garlic and the garlic salt and the onion. You want all of that mixed together. using jasmine rice but use whatever you want what I did do is I did rinse the rice I wanted to get the starch off of it all right we are good all right now we're to our next stage and you guys this goes really fast it does we have our sauce complete we have our filling complete we have our leaves that are done and so now we're just going to fill them your leaf is going to roll like this all right what you want to get rid of is this really fibrous vein of it. So what you're going to do is lay it down, take your knife, and just cut it down, just like that. Then a little slice, That's all you have to do. All right, now I'm using an ice cream scoop just because it's easy for me. You fill it with as much as you would like, and I like them to be hearty, I really do. So on a big leaf like this, I'm using almost two of these scoops. Use a tablespoon, use whatever you want, but I just happen to have that handy. Then you roll it over, you tuck it in, and you roll it over. Voila! Voila! There is your cabbage roll, your first one. How simple is that? All right, so we cut the fibrous, we cut it down the middle, fill it with as much as you would like, tuck it in, tuck it in, tuck it in, and give it a roll. There you go. I think these are just beautiful. I really do. I love these so much. Just a little bit. Can you see this, cameraman? Just a little bit. See how, how hard that is? You could eat that. There's nothing wrong with eating it. But it would just be harder for you to roll if it was there. 
And then I'm just going to cut down the center of that vein just a little bit. And I'll pop these in. Now you're going to note as you get to the smaller leaves, you're going to need to have less filling because you don't have as much room. So just adjust for that. <clears throat> These are the finished cabbage rolls. Aren't they beautiful? I think they really, really are pretty. What you want to be mindful of when you are doing this is to be sure you tuck the uh, top over and you tuck the sides in and you roll it so that it's secure. You don't want these opening up on you because in the cooking time, the meat is going to spill out. So just be careful of that. A lot of people will put toothpicks in them. I don't think you really need to. If you're careful, just be careful about the way you wrap them, you're okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a bit of our sauce. And I'm going to ladle it into the bottom of our slow cooker. Just because I want a little bit of base for these guys. Then I want you to notice too, I overshot with a pound and a half here. And the reason I did is because when I purchased the cabbage, I got a smaller head. I usually get a huge head. So this recipe that I made with a pound and a half of beef, that recipe would be for a large head of cabbage. So now what you want to do is just gently place them in, just like this. Aren't they beautiful? I mean, look at all that beautiful color. Now we're going to ladle more sauce over the top of them. Mm. <laughs> I love it when I hear a cameraman going, mm. And these last ones I'm just going to place on top. Just like that. And the rest. Now, the rest of the cabbage that I cooked off, and I told you <clears throat> typically what I would do is use that for uh, a cabbage casserole or something. Because this cabbage was so small, I just went ahead and finished cooking it off. Because what you want to do is you want to like break it open a little bit with that fibrous piece gone. And you're going to, come here and look at this. You're gonna lay it right on top. What this is going to do, it's going to keep the moisture in there. It's going to have added cabbage flavor, which is wonderful. I really had a tough vein. And then what we are going to do is, then what we are going to do is mm -hmm. be what we're going to do is be real happy because you guys, dinner is done. It's done. What we do now is simply plug this in for seven hours. Seven hours, seven hours. About every hour, hour and a half, two hours, whatever, I will come back, I'll get my ladle, and I will make sure that that sauce is evenly distributed, and I will do that. When I serve this, and I don't know that I will be filming when I serve it, but if I do film when I serve it, you're gonna see me serving this with mashed potatoes because this dish is complemented so beautifully with mashed potatoes. So I will try to film that, but I won't guarantee it, okay? So with that being said, plugs in on low for seven hours, every hour and a half to two hours, get in and just give it a nice little basting. And Possibly I'll see you at the end. I hope I do. Bye. All right, well, I wasn't able to um, wait until the end to show you the end result of it uh, on a plate, but you don't need to see the end result because I hope you'll try it and you'll see your own end result. 
but uh, what I want to tell you is that if you enjoy coming to my kitchen and you enjoy cooking with me, I enjoy cooking with you. So what I'd like you to do is subscribe. Just hit that little subscribe button, come back, let's do this again and let's do it often because I think it's fun. I think it's just rich in flavor, rich in texture, rich in design when you cook something and serve it to your family. So with that being said, good health to you, enjoy your cabbage rolls, and I will see you on the next video. The ingredients will be below.